as a husband or as a wife, if you have expectations uh, for your spouse and you don't even know what you haven't, you've never, you've never understood God's definition for a wife. You never understood God's definition for a husband. You never understand God's defining know what marriage is supposed to be. And God is always about defining things. He's gave, he's given everything definition because there's power in that. There's clarity in that. There's conciseness in that. There's functionality in that. There's, there's limitations in that. There's freedoms in that. There's, and you, if you don't understand the definition of marriage, then how are you talking about what somebody's supposed to be? Right. Most husbands, most husbands aren't really looking for a wife. They're looking for a mama. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Welcome to another episode of Win As One Gospel Love Edition. I'm Aviance. I'm Caitlin. I am Aramis. And I am Coach D. Oh, you got to go last this time. You feel good? I'm going last last time. Yeah, I know. But we had to kind of like wait it out to see if you was going to go or not. <laughs> no, I mean, and not, we had to go like counterclockwise. Yeah, it was just a little. It's, a it's not about feeling good. Is okay. Is so, <laughs> so today <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, we're going back to defining marriage again. So, explain to us why this is important to go back to defining marriage yeah. again. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I I don't I'm not quite sure, but um, you know, as we were as we were uh, going through our coffee in the morning club, you know, obviously we 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 kind of summarized our coffee in the morning club conversation. Um, on, on our podcast and mm -hmm. we kind of go through everything that we discuss. And I think we, we talked about defining marriage on the podcast one time before. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we had, if we went through, uh, like we're going through it in coffee in the morning club. And I mentioned mm -hmm. it a lot, um, in, in detail. I mean, not, I'm sorry, not in detail, but in reference to other stuff, but I don't know if we've ever taken the time to really get into, the importance of defining marriage mm -hmm. and how most couples when they go into marriage they don't talk about like like they don't define it you know if, if you know uh, husbands wives men women you know when you grew up you had this 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 idea of what you thought marriage was and what you or what you wanted your marriage to be you know mm -hmm. whatever that was mm -hmm. you know and so uh, um, a lot of times, though, it, the current state of uh, uh, the marriage don't line up, <laughs> right? Right, and and um, I remember talking to a um, a wife one time, and um, you know, they were, her and her husband was going through some things, and 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 uh, you know, she just broke down. You know, this is not what I envisioned my marriage to be. I I always thought my marriage would be this, and she just was going boo and 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 and, and as I was listening to it. Um, the thought came to me, one, I, I don't know how realistic her expectation was mm -hmm. when it came to marriage. And two, and two, the woman that you are currently wouldn't yield the marriage you dreamed of having as a as a as a young girl. Mm. Right. Because I knew her and I knew some of her you know, struggles and challenges when it came to being a wife. Right. Who you are as a wife, like like marriage is not the problem. Mm. Like the institution of marriage is not the problem. Mm. The people that are that are the under the umbrella <laughs> of marriage, that they're the problem. But marriage is not the problem, right? God has given us everything we need in in the in the uh, spirit of love and the power of love and the law of love to enable us to function under marriage. We have challenges adapting and allowing that love to to grow us into you know, uh, heroic husbands or, or wondrous wives, right? We have that challenge and, and that's that's a requirement uh, um, for for having the marriage that most people grew up dreaming about. Now this is the interesting thing because even though we're about to define marriage right now, I feel as if people are actually going to redefine marriage in order for it to work for them. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think that you can, I don't think that you can do that they can come, the come up with their, their own, own definition. That, that's what I'm saying. Outside yeah. the realm right. of their own understanding. Like right. so so Kayla and I were watching um we were watching Love is Blind last night. I love it. And it, it's it is good so far, but which one? American, Brazil, Japan, which well, one? Th there's there's more there's oh, more yeah, national. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. You're, you're putting the song. Okay. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> um no, but so with the the American one and there there was a, a lady in there and she was talking about how she wanted to, you know, set boundaries for 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 their mm -hmm. engagement, their marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And and in in her mind, that's what defining the marriage is. You see what I'm saying? It, it's all relative to to their level of understanding. So for her, it, it Defining their marriage is establishing boundaries, which is wrong. Mm. 
because there shouldn't be any, you know, any closed doors or anything like that in marriage, right? Mm-hmm. But but the 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 mindset that she had was right in a way. But it was it was only going to take them so far. You know, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? It, mm-hmm. It's 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 just relative to her understanding. When you say when you say what when she's talking about boundaries, what what kind of boundaries? So she, she she didn't really go into defining exactly what they were, but she she wanted to she wanted she wanted it to be known that that there was there was going to be a, a a standard set of you know expectation behavior um, areas that that they made sure to respect you know just th- that's the mm-hmm. kind of impression that I got from mm-hmm. how she was saying it mm-hmm. is that she just wanted there to be an understanding of you know how they would treat each other you know what areas that they wouldn't you know push or press on or, or what areas that they would just have an understanding to you know be easier in you know that that kind of deal mm-hmm. and and so that's kind of what got me thinking about um you know what you were saying as far as defining marriage i think that's perfect because nowadays that is everybody's idea of defining marriage is i have to set standards and boundaries right which is completely different yeah. from defining yeah. marriage yeah and, and and there are there are some aspects or elements in uh defining marriage that 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 have certain boundaries or limitations built into it Mm-hmm. Um, but but what you're saying, I, I understand what you're saying. Now, you know, some people take that like their their idea of boundaries is really their way of maintaining their space. Right, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It's really their way of being able to do what they want to do exactly. when they want to do it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. That's yep. that's their idea of a boundary. Okay, like like when I get up on Saturday morning and I want to, you know, uh, watch football. Don't you can't interrupt that time. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you what know? you're saying is that they're they're basically still trying to keep their individuality yes. right. they, they, they're not, and, and what that does is that prevents them from moving into the goal of, of marriage oneness, yeah right? right which is oneness and and th- therein lies the the um the prevailing the prevailing wedge that drives a husband in one direction and a wife in another direction is is when there's no there's no moving into it toward oneness then you can enjoy the built-in um characteristics of oneness like like when god said the two shall become one inside of that oneness is everything a lover is looking for inside of the oneness is everything a lover is looking for whatever it is that you envision as a young girl whatever it is you envision as a as a as a man from a from a from your marriage inside of oneness is everything that you desire as a as a lover or as a husband and a wife and when you're not moving toward that then you, you 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 sense that this isn't what I thought. This is lacking this, or this doesn't have, you know, uh, our definition and our definition of marriage. Well, probably before you go into that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what what I love is that I love how I see you and Leslie. Y'all have no space, and even no space. right, they have allow. no space. I don't love. So even t- today, like when Leslie called and she was like, "What's the problem?" You like what? Yeah. You ain't you ain't answer my phone call, and I just love it because it's like, hey, hey, <laughs> okay, whatever you space know, you think you got, yeah, ain't no space. Ain't you no better space. answer my call. You know, like, you know, it's you just... know what I love about that, and, you know, and, and 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 I hope my husband's catch this. What I love about that is for her to have the mindset that she can say that. Absolutely, it's like it's I like love it. it's like yo, yeah. yo, it's you like, ain't yo. got no space. But yeah, so I, I love the. <laughs> I love the 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 um, I don't know how and how I, how I would describe that, but I, I love the confidence and audacity, the boldness, the, the audacity like, yeah. to yeah. be able to to be able to say that and say it in a way that listen, you, you need to respond to me. <laughs> you know, well, because right. you've done your job at that point, right? Meaning. Because you you you're supposed to confirm and affirm and, and yeah. all of that stuff builds that confidence in her to feel like if she comes at you like that. She's not gonna. There's not gonna be any love lost. Right. You know right, what I mean. Right. Like it's just gonna continue on because you doing your job. Right. I love that. No, it's that's a great, great, great observation. But just I don't know that that I love that. That's it's like <laughs> as as Emma just said, the culture that we've created, the culture that we've created, has has produced that way of thinking in her. Like you have some some relationships where where the wife wouldn't dare call and, and approach the husband in that manner because mm-hmm. ain't no telling what he might say to her. Right. right. But that that's not marriage. That's not marriage. And it's a it's a it's a real thing um, to be able to, and it's a 
it's an inspiring thing. It's an invigorating thing for, for, for a wife or a husband to be able to call, contact their spouse and be like, yo, what? What? <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on? Like, like, <laughs> like, like I, I, not only do I have the right to be saying this, mm -hmm. um, but I have, I have the confidence and I'm comfortable to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable enough in the love that we have that where I can, I can pull you to the side and say, listen, you better answer my phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. So no, it's it's a beautiful that's, thing. That's that's a different way. Of, you know, a lot of people these days, they you know, they don't think like that. They're mm -hmm. like, what? Don't talk to me like that. Why are you calling me like that? You don't need to be in my business. I'm gonna be home when I'm home. Yeah, yeah, you don't own me. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. Wow, they say that. <laughs> yeah, and they married. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah. they gotta read their Bible. They ain't <laughs> read a song about it and everything. <laughs> these folk, yeah, oh yeah. Wow, you don't right. own me. You don't yeah, own me. you don't own yeah. me. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You know that's. I mean that's that's. Uh, what is it the. First, first, wife's, first wife's Club. I actually yeah. love that yeah. movie. But yeah, that's it's, their It's that's a whole a song. song. You don't own me. You don't own me. You don't own me. I mean, granted, they, they were divorced, but that's, you know, that's that's the idea, though, is that no well, man owns you. Yeah, that's part of the divorce culture, though. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing we talk about all the time in our, in our Coffee in the Morning Club is, is like, 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 like the divorce culture. Mm -hmm. Right, Golf, our, our gospel love movement and our Coffee in the Morning Club and everything we do on our gospel love banner is designed to rescue marriages from the divorce culture. Most folks, we started this, um, we started this promotion called "It's Not Your Fault." Most folks don't even realize that they're they've submitted to a divorce culture that that will that sixty percent currently it's like fifty seven percent that's and we can say close to sixty percent now that's six out of ten marriages. In the divorce, like the divorce culture is designed to produce divorce. Well, I don't I don't think I don't think there's any outside of what we're doing. I don't think there's any training available to prepare a woman for what came after, um, you know, the, the, the period of women empowerment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I think I think. And this is just me kind of thinking through and my observation and all that doesn't have to be accurate. But looking at how that period affected everybody, it was women fighting for their rights, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you have to fight that hard for something that, that is owed to you mm -hmm. for in, in the beginning, there's oftentimes a tendency to now try to be as opposite of what affected you that way as possible, mm -hmm. right? And and that takes a toll on societal culture from there because if you look at how that affects a man, it's like, well, I ain't putting up with that. Right. Like, right. I'm not comfortable with that. I know my role as a man in a household, and if you're going to be the opposite of what a wife is supposed to be, well, then... Mm -hmm. Right, you know what I'm saying, and that that yeah. that's what birthed that divorce culture. And, and, a, and a bigger, but part of the problem is, is we got to go back to the original way of thinking. Yeah, most husbands or and wives don't really understand what the functionality and the role of a husband is. Like, who who knows what it means to love your spouse as Christ loved the church? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like how many people you know talking about that I'm still learning yeah, yeah. Yeah. who knows what it means to husbands to leave their father and mother and cleave to their spouse like yeah. like, like that's, that's revelation nobody's knowledge they ain't nobody yeah. they ain't, nobody, they ain't hacking at the leaves most right. folks are just hacking at leaves they, 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 I listen to people all the time it's like these folks they just, they just <laughs> and, and no, no offense to them the people, we know what we know right. we know what we know and, and, and we know what we know there's things that I know today that I wish I would have known nine years ago so that I can coach y'all into something different yeah. like it's mm -hmm. But yeah. but we know we know. But most folks they just they ain't talking about. It's so that. interesting. I think maybe like two out of ten, every two out of ten, Papa D may be like, yo, that man right. But eighty percent, eighty percent, yeah, eighty yeah. percent of what he listens to, like, man, them folks know what they talking about. They just talking. They just wrong. They wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Eighty percent of what he listens to. I mean, wrong. it's just you know, and that's just what it is. And, and that don't mean I know everything, but I, I know, I know, I know what I know. I, I, I you know, know the what word. I know, I know what I know. Words. And it starts, <laughs> right. in, it starts with the word of God. Yeah. And and I mean, if you're talking about marriage, it's like you know, they just, they just, they just hacking at these. They just. You know, but that's what they know. They, they, they've learned counseling techniques and they you know, know what they know. But see, you got to go to the source. You got to go to the original way of thinking. Right. You know, and as a husband or as a wife, if you have expectations 
uh, for your spouse and you don't even know what you haven't you've never you've never understood God's definition for a wife you never understood God's definition for a husband you never understand God's defining know what marriage is supposed to be and God is always about defining things he's gave he's given everything definition mm -hmm. because there's power in that there's clarity in that there's conciseness in that there's functionality in that there's there's limitations in that there's freedoms in that there's and you, if you don't understand the definition of marriage then how are you talking about what somebody's supposed to be Right. Most husbands, most husbands aren't really looking for a wife. They're looking for a mama. Yeah, come on. Right. They're looking for a mama. They're not looking for a wife. Does definition directly, directly reveal purpose? Yes. Definition. So so when we look at how we define things from God's perspective, we look we got to look at how Adam first named the animals. Adam's mm. naming gave definition. Mm. It also revealed purpose. Mm. It also revealed function, mm -hmm. right? When you look at a giraffe, Adam named the giraffe according to what he saw the functionality and the purpose and, and, and what he was called or what the giraffe was, was supposed to be and how it was supposed to operate in the earth. And that's how everything is. When, when, and Adam, Adam got his, his ability to do that from the image and likeness in which he was created. When we go all the way back to the beginning, really creation was about was about God giving definition to the things that was created. Right. It was about giving definition. The idea of light means to to illuminate. It means to animate. It means to bring alive. It means to cause fun cause to function. That's the idea of let there be light. It's the, he gave definition to the to the to the chaos. He brought clarity. He brought clarity to the chaos. Some of the some of the things that uh, we definition does is. It, uh, it, it, when you define it, it brings clarity. It gives meaning. It gives value. It creates boundaries. It gives character. It causes. It gives purpose, direction, and function. And and when God, when in the beginning, when God saw that, uh, when God did that, it was like you know the 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 the, the earth was without form. That word form means to be confused and chaotic and empty and desolate, right? It was a it was to go to a waste area. It was without purpose. To be void means to be without purpose. When God said, "Be let there be light," it, it gave character and animation, and purpose to creation. So when you define marriage, what are you giving it? You're giving it purpose. You're giving it mm -hmm. function. You're giving it definition. You're giving it, you know, limitations. You're giving it freedoms. You're giving those things, and and even in in the in the uh, in what you were talking about, in defining things and God giving it limitations and boundaries mm -hmm. is not is not for um, my benefit. More when we do it, like as you described, it's yeah. more for my benefit. Right. But when God gave the fish boundaries, it was for the fish's benefit. Right. Right. It was for the fish to stay healthy. It was for the fish to function properly. But if we well, in marriage, we don't when we when we when we're setting boundaries and limitations, it's for my benefit. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for my pleasure. Because right? I still want to keep a lot of the same stuff yeah. that I was doing before. Right. I, mm -hmm. I I really I really if we really if we really want to be like like in your face about it. I really, I really want to maintain the privilege of being single <laughs> while I'm married. That's it. I mean, that's that's really what what it comes down to. Folks really are about staying uh, single more than they are being married, right? And 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 you know, you know, you say that to people that they ain't ready for that. You know, they, <laughs> what do you mean? No, no, no. You still you trying to stay single? <laughs> yeah. You want to still live single but be married. Right, yeah. you want to live like you. You want to think like you thought when you're single. That's why we said identifying as a lover is is foundational. Well, I have a question about that because one yeah. one of the things we saw on on, uh, on the show last night was um, there there was a the, there was a conversation between another couple, and um, you know the the woman asked about um, you know does he still talk to his his exes and and you know what what's his relationship with his friends how you know how often do they go out and stuff like that. So when you talk about um, people using those boundaries to kind of keep their their single tendencies. What what does it look like from from? I mean, first and foremost, let's be clear: exes out the window. Yeah, that's silly. right. That, that's, that's, silly. Dumb. that's dumb. That's dumb. Right. Silly. Whatever excuses for that, there are none. Yeah. But the friends situation, like a lot of friends that I had, a lot of friends that Caitlin had, just kind of if they wasn't with. You know, building with us, they just kind of fell off. Mm -hmm. Like we weren't, we we eventually stopped, like making time to go spend with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the friends, the friends that we have now are, are they single friends? You talking about? Um, 
They, yeah, they, but they had girlfriends that they were with for a while. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't like they, they were... They're still single. I don't care about correct, girlfriend. No, they're correct. still single. But I'm just, still thinking I'm, I guess I'm asking from the standpoint of, you know, what does that look like, the, the, the dynamic of making time to go spend with friends and how often that happens and, and, and how does that relate to those boundaries? Like, how, how do you determine what's right and what's wrong with that? Well, I, I think one of the... The first things you start with is it's it's not about it's not a matter of being right or wrong, mm. right? The scripture says this. It says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Mm. So that word expedient means to be beneficial, right? Gotcha. To be, to cause growth, to be profitable. Yeah. So when it comes to what you're asking, we got to always start from the standpoint of not what's right or wrong, but what's more beneficial to my marriage. Right. What's going to make my marriage end up being what it is that it's supposed to be? What's more beneficial? Is it more beneficial to surround myself or go hang out with uh, men who think like single men? Or is it more beneficial for me to go hang around with husbands who think like lovers and husbands who like, like they're supposed to? Right. right. It's about what's more beneficial than what's right or what's wrong. Because you can always justify right and wrong. You can always justify something. Right. You, but, but, but when it comes to what's been more profitable... Now, now it be your 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 wiggle room becomes less, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to uh, you know me being able to wiggle around something. Mm -hmm. Right, now that's good because that 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 thought process leads you to the the main thing that you have to figure out, which is what's the definition and the purpose of your marriage. Right, because mm -hmm. if you know that, then that decision becomes that, easier. it becomes mm -hmm. a lot easier. Right, that's why we always get we, we say we got to define marriage. Right. That's why we got to we got to define it and. And again, uh, most most couples haven't even even heard of the idea of defining their marriage. We're just gonna get married. Right? We're just gonna go and do it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like most people usually they they pick the person who they don't mind spending the most time with. Like as far as to get married. Yeah. 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 yeah like oh, you know, I, I mean, like it, to be around them a lot. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother conversation. Why people pick certain people uh, to get married? I mean, I, I I just I just don't believe in that concept. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe wait, just picking who you want. Wait, you don't believe in nah, that thing. just picking who you want to pick to get married. No, that guy got to be in that thing, man. Yeah. It can't just be, oh, oh, I like the way she do this. I like the way she said this. Oh, let's get married. No, man, that ain't, that ain't how that thing works. Mm -hmm. But if it's a three-fold cord, it's not easily broken. Mm -hmm. See, the reason you have folks getting married is you got a two-fold cord because ain't no God in it. Ain't no God in it at all. Right when you have when you have the spirit of God as the as the primary cord and you wrapping yourself around what the institution of marriage was and what's the definition of God's definition of marriage, now that threefold cord becomes unbreakable. <clears throat> you said something on on the previous podcast. Uh, it might have been when we were talking about I think about identifying as lovers, and we were breaking down the details of that. And you said when a person has that mindset, when they when they understand that, it's so much harder for them to get divorced. And I said that's exactly right. Right. When you identify as a lover and you understand the power that's connected to that, when you define marriage and when you get together and you define marriage, we're meeting with couples now and we're going through the definition of marriage. And, and it's it's fascinating to me how fascinated they are. When you start talking about <laughs> defining marriage It's like it's like it's like it's like a deer in the headlights. Like what? Like, right. like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, no, but that's that's what we have to understand. Everything. Everything was designed to be defined. And when you don't have definition, you have chaos. You have unfruitfulness. You have confusion. You have, you have purposelessness. You have people lost, right? You have a wife don't know what, like, without, like, what, without, a, without, a, without a vision, without definition, there's a, there's a collapse, there's a breakdown, there's disruptions in the flow of what marriage is supposed to be. Which eventually ends in divorce. So this is the interesting thing. So I had did a story. I wanted to know people's thoughts. I said, do you believe that the church prepared you well for your marriage? Nobody responded yes. Nobody. And I think it's just so interesting. Uh-oh. There goes that face. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done, Ivy? What have you done? I just think it's so interesting Man. because honestly, I, and maybe this is another question I want to ask, but when people get married in a church, I feel like they, they they may have a sense of my marriage is now blessed. God God blesses it. And whatever I did it happens in front from of there yeah, is God's I did it in front of God and, and now yeah. God is in the midst, so now we're we're set free. <laughs> that's stupidity. Stupidity. <laughs> I call that stupidity. <laughs> that's stupidity. But this this is the thing no Papa D. I, but that's I really, what they get from the pulpit. Right. Because no, because they, people that think lead thee. What did he got? Jeremiah's message was to the nation of Israel. And God told Jeremiah, I said, the folk y'all following, 
It's causing you there. He was talking, Jeremiah, go tell the people, these religious folk y'all following, it's causing you, they that lead thee, cause thee the error. That's what God told Jeremiah to tell the people. That same message echoes, sentiment echoes today. As we were alluding to earlier, just listen to, listen to some of the folk we're talking about, they got a million followers and they talking about, you know, go just whoever you pick to marry. What? That's the first problem right there. Like, God got to be in that, first and foremost. And they're saying all kind of stuff. It's just, but people are following them because we don't know better. Right. They don't know better. They're going to follow that stuff. <clears throat> right? Like, like, I love asking people this question. When they get to saying stuff, I say, well, why do you think that? <laughs> why do you think that? <laughs> well, because that's what my mama said. Mama could have been dead wrong. That's not the foundation for why you should be basing and believing what you believe about marriage. Like, why do you, why, why, or even when they say, well, I believe this, well, why do you believe that? I mean, I, I, when they start off like that, I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> Anything less than thus saith the, the scripture say this, then you, 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 you build no singing sand, right? And I'm talking about people from in leadership positions, and that's the issue. No, the church isn't, hasn't prepared couples properly before <laughs> to get married because we, we don't know what it means to identify as a lover. I, I don't know no no marriage prerequisite um, uh, what they call what's it called uh when you get uh, premarital counseling that's talking about defining marriage mm -hmm. like like we've searched this thing high and low ain't nothing on the internet ain't nobody talking about it. I've called a uh, colleague like like ain't nobody talking about identifying as a lover right nobody understands those things we just hacking at the leads man and it's causing sixty percent of the folks in the church right like our primary avatar is faith based marriages. It's people who claim Jesus as their Lord. Right. And you talking about you you a lover, you want to be in love, you want to be married? No, we, we listen, what we're what we're serving the community now, the marketplace, is gonna revolutionize what we call premarital coaching. We don't call it counseling, we call it premarital coaching, and then we call it sustaining, sustaining your your uh premarital your premarital flow by entering into our coffee in the morning club community. So question. So when when we present this to people and when we sit them down and say, define your marriage, do you feel as if this may actually be a detriment to some marriages? Because they're like, you know what? I, I was sharing this with Caitlin before the other day, that one of my one of my greatest concerns is, say you meet, a, we get a couple that's been married 10 years. And now I start talking to them about identifying as a lover and defining your marriage and you know, uh, what it means to um, be a heroic husband. And it's like, they start, and it's like, wait, my <laughs> husband don't do that. Like, what? Huh? No, he ain't none of that. He ain't none of that. Like, he ain't none of that. Like, she ain't none of that. Like, and, 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 they, and they make a, they, they, they make a, 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 a decision. Yeah. And they get it, they take a certain perspective and it's like, wait, 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 don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> right. Don't panic. Right. That's not don't why panic. we told you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't panic. Don't use that as a as a as as a tool for you right. to distance yourself. Don't right. know. Um, but yeah, that that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. We're gonna and it's, it's happened it's happened already that, you know, you're talking to people and they're recognizing that the characteristics that I'm describing in a heroic husband, their husband not not, not demonstrating. Mm -hmm. Right? And so now the the easy thing to do would now be to blame the husband. Well if you was doing this and if you was doing that and you was doing this and oh. vice versa. The wife the wife the same thing. I hear I am describing the, the, the wondrous wife's characteristics and, and the husband sitting like man, my wife ain't my wife, man, she ain't she ain't doing that. She ain't mm. acting like that. She ain't responding like that. <laughs> no, she ain't doing that. You know what? She's the problem. She's the problem. Right? S excuse me. So so that that is something that, you know, we, we are aware of and I, I'm I'm very careful in letting letting couples know that listen, as you as you become aware, as you become more knowledgeable, as you get an understanding, as you become wise in everything that we're teaching you, um, then you'll be able to navigate the shortcomings of what's not um, developed yet in your husband. I, 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 I think it was Kieran I was talking to. I was telling him, listen, you got to look at it from this standpoint. If you got a husband that's not or a wife that's not fulfilling these things, just look at the upside that they have. They have a, they have a lot of upside, mm -hmm. right? They got well, a lot of upside. Of so if it. you married them at this condition, if you married them in the condition that they're in now, mm -hmm. imagine when they fulfill all that potential that they have. Right. Right? You know what? So you got to look at it like that instead of as a negative. Like, yeah. man, he got a lot of room. Or she got a lot of room to develop. She got a lot of, man, when she, when she gets into that, when she gets to that level, man, watch out. She's going to be something special. So that's how you look at it instead of looking at it as a detriment. But, but, but we have to make people aware because 60% of marriages... People are saying, 
I quit. They're saying I quit, right? That's what's destroying the fabric of our communities and our society, right? right? We don't understand the connection. God intended the marital, um, the marriage, the institution of marriage to be the foundation for which our society, or let me say it like this, families are built upon. Communities are built upon families, right? Communities impact, communities build nations. Mm -hmm. When you, when, you, when you don't have the institution of marriage functioning properly, then how can you have a nation functioning properly? It, it just won't work. And what we're getting at is, is, is giving people a definition, which we got to mention. Um, we're running out of time here. Giving people a definition of, for marriage that's, that's functional, that's empowering, that's, that's, that's going to help them to fulfill their respective roles as a husband and as a wife. And we might as well dive into that now. Um, the definition that we want to give you guys is um, mm -hmm. not working properly. So, do you have own. to go ahead something? Yeah, I don't know what's the problem there. What um, do you need to do? Just the air button at the bottom. Yeah, and we should be good now. Yeah. Um, so we want to give definition to the. This is the def as we pursue God, as we sought, as we sought God, and we wanted to know. Um, look, we want to know a definition that that that's functional and that matters is, uh, and this was this came forth. It says marriage is God's desired mechanism for a husband and a wife to experience the joy. I'm sorry, to experience and enjoy the intimacy, pleasures, power, and purpose of oneness. So when you talk about defining marriage, we're talking about giving definition to how a marriage. Uh, functions and how it how it flows in the in the intertwining between a husband and a wife is to enjoy experience and enjoy the intimacy pleasure power of oneness oneness is the goal inside of oneness is intimacy pleasure power and purpose all built inside of oneness now if a if a couple is not on a path to oneness if they're not on a road to oneness then guess what will be lacking in a relationship Intimacy, right. yep. pleasure, right. mm -hmm. power, right. mm -hmm. and purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why things aren't going where you're going. Because you're trying to maintain your single attitude and your single mindset and not make a connection with your spouse that's going to, that's going to yield you intimacy, pleasure, power, and purpose. If we don't give definition, if we don't understand that, now that, that right there alone will solve, I don't know, you know countless couples in, in you know, their their misery within their within their marital relationship so here's a thought you know how i know it happened to many people you get married and your friends start start telling you you changed ever since you know and then there's there there becomes like a. I want to say you damn right <laughs> i'm supposed to change <laughs> stop being silly come on right, right, right. but there there becomes uh that's like uh, saying money don't change it yes it do i'm sorry go back i'm sorry go <laughs> I got something too. I'm just I'm, you go, do. Go, okay, shut up, see? shut up. Go. Uh oh. Uh, go. So it becomes it becomes a fear of loss because for for some people their friends is all they know, and they feel as if they're like their friends really know me. I do not want want to lose them because they actually feel like their marriage is more expendable than their friends. It, go. You want to get that? <laughs> yeah. So so if if you really think about it, that speaks to. That that speaks to how they identify themselves and who that and who they identify themselves with. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If if and I really love how you worded that definition because you used husband and wife. Mm -hmm. You didn't use man and woman, mm -hmm. right? That speaks to how they identify themselves. Mm -hmm. right. And if me, Aramis, identifies myself more with my single friends who I've grown up with, and 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 I and I believe that they know me better than the person that I'm supposed to be building into oneness with. Then that's going to determine my mindset about who I care, wh whose opinion I care more about, who I'm more willing to, um, you know, submit to, cooperate with, you know, spend time with. All of those different things, like I'm more so becoming one with my friends than I am with mm -hmm. my wife. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so really, that's just that's just a reflection of who they're identifying as and yeah. and, and and who they're identifying with. You know, speaking of identifying, uh, one of those things that you have to first identify, this is like my prerequisite. Like when you talk about pre-marital pre, pre coaching, is my prerequisite, you got to identify as a lover. 
because marriage was made for lovers. Mm -hmm. And the power, and I, I, again, we mention things, we don't get into the depth of them like we do in our marriage mastery course and other stuff because we just, I'm not allowed to for one. Oh, okay, um, I was about to say, <laughs> get, get, but, get the real reason. But the other thing is, <laughs> the other thing is uh, it's just, it's, it's, so, it's so layered, right? And so this week we revealed uh, an aspect of identifying as a lover that we hadn't revealed before, and it, it's powerful. And it, it, it we, I got the revelation from uh, the life of Jesus, which we get all of our revelation from. Like, it's, Jesus was the model husband. He was the model husband. He was the husband that you want to watch that that we that we look at to see how we're going how we're supposed to love our spouse. And uh, it was when Jesus in John's uh, Gospel, the 18th chapter, when Jesus was about to be uh, arrested and going through his 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 cross, right. And uh, Judas showed up with the soldiers. And when the soldiers showed up, they said they had their swords, they had their shields, they had their weapons, and they came, they came, they was like, they was like came ready, crewed up. They was like ready to handle situations if they had to. And it says when they when they came up, Jesus stepped up, you know, the disciples behind him, he stepped up, like, who y'all looking for? Like, who y'all want? You know, knowing who they was coming for. He said, Who y'all looking for? They said, they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, he said, he said, I am he. Right? Now, now he identified with being who they were. He identified with being Jesus, and it goes back to the "I am that I am" statement that we initially revealed the power of identifying when God identified Himself as the "I am I am," or "I be who I be" to Moses when Moses said, uh, "Who should I tell them sent me?" Mm -hmm. He says, "I be who I be." In other words, "I am who I am." God identifying with being. This, this God of Abraham, this God of Isaac, this God of Jacob, this God that's able to do whatever it is necessary in order for me to deliver you from out of Egypt. I be who I be. The idea of being is, is something that we're teaching on now, uh, but being is what it's all about. Most counselors, most uh, coaches, they, take, they, take, they focus on doing before they have someone to be. And that's why they sustain for so long, then they quit and they fall off, and next thing you know, they, back, they need some more sessions, right? But when you be a thing, Doing becomes easier and having becomes the outcome of that. Right. Well, identifying as a lover emits a power. Marriage is spiritual, right? And the spiritual attack on marriage we call the divorce culture. Well, w built into the divorce culture, the idea of culture means to cause to think, to speak, and to act a certain way. Well, there's spiritual forces within that divorce culture trying to get you to think in a manner that will produce divorce trying to get you to speak in a manner that will produce divorce. That's causing trying to get you to act in a manner that will produce divorce. Yeah. Well, what identifying as a lover does, it causes those forces, those influences to fall back. As we see here, when Jesus said, I am he, it says all of the soldiers, all of the guards went backwards and fell to the ground. Well, we know that the battle for the believer, the battle for the husband, the battle for the wife in their spiritual warfare is to cast down imaginations and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Well, what knowledge can we speak of and apply specifically here? The knowledge of being a lover, the knowledge of being a heroic husband, the knowledge of being a wondrous wife, right? That's the knowledge that we use to cast down or the thoughts that come with the divorce culture, the imaginations that come with the divorce culture, the ideals and the ideologies and the way of behaving and the way of speaking that comes with the divorce culture. Divorce culture will say, when, when, when the wife calls you and say, why you didn't answer my phone? Why are you checking me like that? Don't be checking me mm -hmm. like that. Don't, don't worry about that. Dude, what is it? What you want? Right? That's what the divorce culture will tell right. you to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the culture of love and the kingdom culture, they don't tell you, you don't, you don't speak like that. Right. Right. That's not that's not it, it thrills my heart that she has the confidence to call me and say, you better answer my call next time I call you. <laughs> As you said, that means I'm loving right. Yeah, that means I'm loving right, because there's a boldness that comes when you're loving people the way you're supposed to love them. Mm -hmm. There's a confidence that they have that there's, a, there's that they can be free to address and say certain things to you when you're loving them properly. Well, when Jesus said I am, when he identified with who he was. He, he dealt with those men who showed up with the mind or the thought to arrest him. Mm. He had to allow them to arrest him, right? We have to allow the divorce culture's influence into our marriage. How do we do that? By not identifying with who we are. We're not, by not identifying with being a lover. Marriage was made for lovers. When you identify with being a lover, you deal with, you cut off certain aspects of of thoughts and and as you said before when I when I when I uh, identified as a lover 
Listen, I call my boys. Listen, man, don't call me no more. <laughs> I'm not hanging out like that. I'm not going to the trip bars anymore. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing none of those things because I identify with being a lover. That's not what lovers do. But if I was to continue to hang out with those guys, if I was consider- continue to be around them, it would just be a matter mm-hmm. of moments yep. before I found myself back in that situation. Hence, coffee in the morning community. Yep. We have a community of marriage, of couples who are moving into, growing into marriage mastery. It's an opportunity for you to surround yourself and be around couples that are, that are about enjoying and experiencing the intimacy, the pleasure, the power, and the purpose of oneness. Like that's the goal of marriage. Built into oneness is everything you can desire as a husband and a wife. And the community is designed to help you understand that. Give you an opportunity to see and behold. Because we know that as human beings we were designed to model behavior. We model what we see. We behold what we behold we become. Right. Right, what we see happening. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm running around with, with my with my with my two year old grandson, and my my how old is baby? She ain't even a year old she, yet. Yeah. By like eight, nine, ten months. Well, she just started walking. Well, last night, me and me and me and Rockman, we running up and down the hallway. We run up and down the hallway. She stood and she watched us run up and down the hallway. She <laughs> she just watched us. She just stood and she was watching us race up and down. We got like a long room we run through. Mm-hmm. She was just watching us, right? Then then I, I was running into the. Into, well, I was chasing him into the bedroom, turned the corner. Next thing I know, I hit these little feet pattern down the hallway. But they were moving a lot faster than what they normally move. Mm. What was she doing? Right. She was trying to mimic our running. She was trying to run now mm-hmm. at, at not even 10 months old, right? She beheld us running. She just stood there and watched us running. She was just watching. She watched a little bit. She was just sitting there watching. We went like four or five times. Next thing you know, I'm in the room. I hit these little feet coming down the hallway. And it was funny, and, and, and the mama came around, look at her, she's trying to run, she's trying to run. <laughs> she's mimicking the behavior. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens as adults. We get married, right? We need to be around couples who are striving for marriage master. We need to be around wives who have entered into that wondrous zone. We need to be around husbands that's tapped into that heroic zone, and we need to, we'll see them responding the way they respond. So, I know that we're, we're going to have to end soon, but I, I would like to touch to. on something. <laughs> All right, go ahead. According to two bars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I just want to hit on something personal for you. So I know that, well, people don't know, but Papa D has a lot of spiritual children. Yeah. You know, including us. Mm-hmm. How does it feel for you as, as, as a father that now that you have this, this knowledge and everything, how you can affect the children around you with their marriages and the generations? Oh, under man, them? it's the most wonderful feeling. It, 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 initially, it was... It was. I had to deal with it because I had. I actually called everybody, but like, like um, when the Lord really started revealing this to us, both from the marital standpoint and the economic standpoint. I, listen, I had to apologize, to folks, because I didn't know what I know now to the degree that I know it, and I wish I had known it mm. because I could have put everybody on a whole different pathway, right? It's not that they're on different on bad paths now. It's just they could have been a lot further along, right? Because I know what I know now, and that was just a matter of positioning. But anyway. Um, it feels wonderful to be able to leave a a a first a legacy of wisdom. What the scripture says: a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the idea of that is Solomon, who was the wisest and the richest man ever lived, he could only be thinking about two things: all the wisdom and all the wealth. The wealth leads to wisdom. To be able to leave a legacy of wealth when it comes to being a lover and when it comes to being a, a heroic husband and when it comes to being a one a wondrous wife. Um, that that's that's more gratifying than anything now. The whole idea behind sons and daughters is to grow them to the point to where they don't longer they no longer need me, right? Mm-hmm. They you know they just need to call me. They don't need me to call me about every little thought, and every little decision. They just they can they, they like they do now. They call me and they you know they're asking <laughs> for stuff. But but it's not it's not it's a matter of me now not being concerned about them on their on their own now. I'm preparing you guys to live life and to live married without me. Because unfortunately, yeah, we probably have to stop here because I'm getting a little emotional about the thought of you like not being around. So we're going to yeah, stop here, yeah, folks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, any last thoughts or questions or anything? Yeah, okay, yeah. awesome. Oh, send us out, babe. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of. 
Gospel love. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's no cuts. Gospel love. Gospel love edition. Are you emotional too, babe? No, babe. I know. Well, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone, enjoy the rest of your week, and we will see you next weekend. Yep. Okay.